PR Network. I am here today to discuss the new Netflix film, Deidre and Lainey Rob a Train. And joining me are the doctor. Say hey. Hola. <laughs> and Phenom. So this is about to be ridiculous. Hey. <laughs> Offense to that, ma'am. <laughs> Doctor notes. What type of notes? Uh, anyway, um, so for those of you who have not already heard about it, Deidre and Lainey Rob a uh, Train is a new Netflix film. The official synopsis is: After their mother ends up in jail, two sisters turn to train robbery in order to support their family. It is directed by Sydney Freeland and written by Shelby Farrell, so written by two women. And it stars Ashley Murray from Riverdale on the CW. She plays Josie. And Rachel Crow, uh, who is brand new. I've looked her up, and it looks like she's done some voice work in the past, but I think this might be her first major film. Um, yeah, so what did you guys think of it? Um, I thought it was going to be a comedy. <laughs> it wasn't? I Maybe it was how I received it. I did. It was good. Don't get me wrong. It was good, but I didn't feel like it was comedy. It was kind of sad. Oh. That might just be my headspace right now, so I own that. But it was kind of sad to me. <clears throat> I definitely thought it was a comedy just maybe not a um it wasn't a slapstick comedy it had slapsticky moments but it wasn't a slapstick comedy it uh reminded me of a lot of teen movies mm -hmm. kind of that like late 80s early 90s teen movie or um what's that movie uh drop dead gorge drop dead gorgeous kind of dark comedy as well i got that vibe from it what about you? Phenom. Oh. Oh. Um, I thought it was a straight like slapstick would fit into the CW teeny universe uh comedy with some dark elements to the story. That's I mean I, I felt it I, I felt it could have worked <clears throat> better as a like a short series oh because um, i felt like there were a lot of elements that they crammed into this short film about these two girls and um there's just all there's really some backstory here yeah and they really they use it to emphasize their it's it's like a quirky struggle film <laughs> you know not supposed to be it's supposed to be funny the way they shot it. Like they shot it very polished, but the elements that are dark are are actually very dark elements. Yeah. You know, and I like I said, I think this would have worked nicely as a Netflix series in the same vein of like love and shit. Yeah. So. I could have definitely seen it as a series. I thought it was I thought it's a good film. I could have also seen this movie coming out in theaters, not just being released on Netflix. Um, it re what was that movie that came out last year with uh, Mae Whitman and the uh, the better Amel? Oh, Ark. <clears throat> no. Um, ooh. The, the ugly friend or something. Yes. The the duff, the duff joint. The Duff. It reminded me of The Duff. I hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I it's love like, The Duff. Like, Big Whitman is like 35, dog. I'm just not <laughs> believing she is still in high school. She might look short, but yeah, just, like Ashley wanted to see The Duff, and, and she loves Mae Whitman. And even she was like halfway through it. She's like, this is stupid. I was like, really? This is not the stupid. This isn't even the stupidest thing Mae Whitman has been in, but you can't do this, man? <laughs> It just, you just can't do it because <laughs> everybody here is like in this movie is thirty five. True, but I I I really like the Duff. It it reminded me of that like that kind of comedy where you're like, 
and the main character so the main character played by Ashley Murray is Deidre and her mom who works at Goodbye not Best Buy Goodbye Mm -hmm. (laughs) gets put in jail after she basically loses it at work like she just has this fit at work destroys a bunch of stuff and gets put in jail and so Deidre is trying to hold her family together while her mother is in jail and they were already living by the like skin of their teeth um but Deidre's actually not a nice person at all no <laughs> like Deidre is really messed up <laughs> but she's really smart she's really good at organizing things um really like ambitious but she's mean she's a bitch <laughs> For for obvious reasons, because she's in like the no child left too far out front ahead of everybody else program. Mm-hmm. And like when your counselor is the counselor that she had and you're <laughs> in that school and your mom's the, the man that I guess helped raise your family is that guy. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah, that was why she she is the way she is. Yeah, her mom. Her mom doesn't have it together. They're barely like scraping by. Her dad is, her mom's black. Her dad is this like white hippie dude who also can't hold down a job and is a former criminal. Um, Her school counselor is played by Sashir Zamata from SNL. And she's just on her way out. She's just trying to get enough kids through college to get a better job. Yeah, she's ran out of encouragement. She's used all her encouragement points at this school. And so it's just like, like Deirdre cannot count on any adult in her life. But at the same time, this still doesn't make her a sympathetic character. She's just not nice to the the good people in her life. Right. Like her little sister. Yeah. So like Lainey's her little sister who's so cute. She's just like this cute light-skinned black girl with all this like curly blonde hair and she's just so sweet and so innocent and Deirdre's like hey so I came up with a great idea about how to make money since we're about to get kicked out of our house and you're about to be taken by CPS uh why don't we just rob these trains (laughs) is it that easy to hop on and off a train because many moments throughout this film they just get on the train. Like, the trains don't be stopping and shit. Trains... Once like, hey, I got to hop on this train, dog. I lived next to train... I grew up next to train tracks and bringing coal and all kinds of shit in. Trains have not gone that slow. <laughs> <laughs> they have not been that slow in years at all. I mean, Ogre hopped on that, on the train at one point in heels and a prom dress or yes. whatever they were. And I was just like, damn, is it that easy? It is not. <laughs> I like how they timed it. They were like, so if we hop, it's going to take about five minutes to hop on. <laughs> and then we got five minutes to go through the boxes. And then we dropped them off. And as soon as we see Mr. Bear on the side, we have two minutes to get off. <laughs> and that wasn't true at all. Because as soon as they saw Mr. Bear, they instantly saw the cops. That wasn't, that time wasn't calculated. And it also caught me because I guess I didn't, I missed the part. I think I got to get a drink and I missed the part where they hopped on the train the first time. So I didn't see how casually they were hopping on and off trains. <laughs> and when I saw them tossing the boxes off the train, I was like, well, if they're taking this long to toss boxes off the train, don't that mean they got to walk back like 10 miles and shit? Exactly. To get the next box? Like, aren't they leaving shit in other cities? And don't that mean some of them, because they had microwaves in the first box. I'm like, you can't just throw a box off a train with microwaves inside of it and it don't be broken some kind of way. Well, they put a lot of styrofoam and styrofoam, styrofoam, styrofoam in the boxes and packaging. So I, I guess maybe. Uh-uh, at 20 miles an hour, no, sir. <laughs> no, sir. I guess. I, don't, I, just, I, don't, <laughs> I just don't understand how they didn't break jumping on and off these trains. Well, I love the first time she tries it. Well, first, the thing that got me was she sees this video of this guy talking about these trains being robbed. And she's like, oh, I could do that. And she literally in broad daylight 
hops on the train with like a, a, a hoe, like a hand hoe, and tries to break the lock, <laughs> drops the thing, and then is just like, oh, I can't do this on my own. Let me hop off this train again in broad daylight and try this again later <laughs> with my sister. Also, um, can we talk about the fact that they were letting their little brother play on the train tracks? Yes. And I was a huge, like my mother raised me on certain movies, and one of those movies was Fried Green Tomatoes, <laughs> where two people get hit by a train in that movie. So I'm like, I don't even play. I don't even like driving over train tracks. I feel like my car might stall. And then my doors, I won't be able to get out on some Final Destination shit. A lot of <laughs> is playing Avengers on the train tracks with all his toys. And I was just like, oh, his little paper that's dogs. what we're doing now? His little paper dogs. <laughs> and got them, like, leaving them little raggedy paper dogs all over the place, got them caught too. <laughs> For some of us growing up, that's all we had. Don't knock the paper dogs now. Well, why did one of them have a paper doll on them when they were robbing the train? Get you a J.C. Penny catalog and go to town. I'm just saying. Mm. They they just basically. Well, I love. So at first they start off, and this is just random. So they are grabbing whatever they can off these trains. They don't even know what they're gonna find when they open up the boxes. They end up with like laundry detergent and stuff. <laughs> and then Deirdre goes to her ex boyfriend Jerry. And the reason she broke up with Jerry is because he got caught selling marijuana. But now she wants Jerry to move all her stuff that she stole off the train. Which Jerry is like, didn't you break up with me because I was a thief? But now you want me to help you? And they just start like selling all this random stuff. She doesn't even know. He's just selling it on eBay. (laughs) Which makes sense, but still... It makes so much sense, but it's so, so it's so erratic. But then by the end, they're like all sophisticated. Her dad starts helping them out and they're like replacing the tags on the broken boxes. She's printing out the tags at school and they're scanning to the boxes to find, they're using like a price check app to scan and see what's in the boxes. Which, which I, I thought was mad intelligent. That was so actually. smart. It was very smart, but I also was wondering why the fuck would they put sales tag barcodes on the outside of boxes in shipments that, no. No, they had that, opened, I thought they had opened the box and was scanning the barcodes inside the box I thought she just scanned the box it looks like she was just scanning the boxes and going this box is full of uh, sleeping bags this box is full of book bags oh that must be in a conti- like a continuity error or something that they didn't catch I could be wrong. I just thought I saw her with the like I didn't. I don't remember her opening the the, the sleeping bag box. Mm-hmm. I remember her just scanning something on the box and going, "This box has sleeping bags." Well, I figure if you have a a big shipping container with lots of boxes in it, you would want it on the outside, just like for that fact. So when so you're not opening the boxes to know what's inside them, like when you're inventorying them. So do you think she was reading the box while one person did the online search? No, it's like, um, have you ever seen, I used to use this a lot for collecting when I, you know, buying things that are like collectibles. Um, they have lots of apps and stuff where you can like scan a barcode and then find out like what stores it's in or whatever. So, and you can check out like what price it is in store, what the retail price of it is. Okay. They have yeah, like I thought that use though like store skews i didn't think it worked on because i felt like she was scanning i I guess i didn't think they put like retail store skews on the outside of shipment boxes no they don't i thought they would put like maybe ppc or barcodes or stuff like that but i didn't think they would put like a the skew you can scan to, to that relates to other skews on other sites I don't think they do because the store determines the price at the end of the day. Not for certain things. They're they're going to have like a basic retail price. Um, like the stores can go up and down like if something is on sale, but they'll have a basic retail price. But also, this is like getting like very specific. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they like I doubt they put this much effort. <laughs> No, no, no. You're you're right. I'm just. It was just weird to me. Like I, you, you got to give me. I'm a, I'm an IT person. Like sometimes I just look at look at shit and I go, but why would you put that? <laughs> if you're having train robbery problems, 
Don't you want to make their jobs more difficult? True. I was going to say, plus, don't forget that the police, it was a Shelby, they lived in a town called Shelbyville, but the side of the car, or the police car just said police. So it's not like they went into super duper detail in this movie. I love, so the person tracking them down is not even a real cop. He's an investigator Um, hired by the train company. He has no jurisdiction. He has no power. And they've taken away the gun that he did have because apparently he beat somebody up who wasn't even the right person. First of all, Shannon, can we talk about the word investigator? Like the way you used, I just like the way you broke that shit apart. I was like, can you say investor? Investigator. investigator. <laughs> no, you say investor gator. Like you invested in Gatorin. Like I'm an investor gator. Hey, so much. <laughs> it's a Kelly thing. He does this to right? me all the time. He does this to me all the time. <laughs> investor gator. I was like, oh, what's the gate? Oh, what's the, how do you gator? The worst. I want to get in on this. And anyway, the investigator is completely <laughs> outwitted by these teenage girls, even though Homegirl is so anal retentive that she has created posters of their bank robbing. Uh, she yeah. has created posters on poster board hanging in their house uh-huh. about how to rob these uh, trains. I expect this type of investigative work from Kimmy Smith's dad, though. Like, this doesn't surprise me at all. So, they all, all this works for me. I but I actually I really enjoyed the one poster that she made the uh the thermometer one, where yeah. you could roll up the as they got higher and higher the amount of money that they. That was pretty creative. It was. It was creative. The clip? With the yeah, with the clips and then rolling the piece of paper up, I was like, she's good. That's that's some good. As someone who often has to make a poster board for my job, I was like, that's some good poster board work right there. I appreciate. She can get still robbing these trains like this. <laughs> well, she's clearly an inventor at heart. Yeah, can't invent a better idea. I just why don't she just sell weed? I didn't like. I thought of that when she, when they said when her ex boyfriend said that he sold weed, I was like, well, that seems like a much easier thing. You got a built in customer base. I don't understand why we aren't sense, doing that. But I get the sense that town ain't but so big, right? Is you ain't gonna make a whole lot of money. Not the eleven thousand dollars that she needed to get her mom out of jail. Yeah, she need to go on the dark Reddit. And hustle off them items. She could have, yeah, she could have been making some bitcoins or something. Yeah, she need to watch dope. The next time she come with say, isn't that the plot to dope? It is. <laughs> nothing wrong with, with recycling plots of, <laughs> of of ingenious black kids. It's nothing wrong with that. Using white people technology against them. I'm all about it. <laughs> all for it. Yeah, so while Deirdre is over here uh, just robbing trains and making money and also hiding money because now she she gets in her head that they don't have to just get her mom out of jail. They can also uh, pay for her first semester of college. Um, her sister is trying to win Miss Teen Idaho. She's mm-hmm. going to be fair. Mm-hmm. She's not trying to win. She was put in there by Missy Pyle. Yes. Who? Oh, the teacher. Yeah, her real name is Missy Pyle. Okay. Fitz doesn't. Which sounds like Missy Pyle. But... <laughs> so this know. was one of the things where I agree with you. I think it could have been fleshed out a little bit better. I like the re- relationship between the teacher and Lainey. And I felt like there was more backstory there. I couldn't exactly figure out why the teacher was so invested in helping Lainey. It seemed like right. they had a connection that they never got a chance to explain. It was, and it was one of those things too, where I was nervous that it was going to turn into like one of those typical teen films where, you know, the teacher ain't shit and is setting a kid up too. And it was like, oh no, she actually does believe in her and wants to see her blossom and thrive. Mm-hmm. Well, she sure ain't do shit when she got arrested at the end, but stare at her and go back to the pageant. Nobody did really. I was waiting for somebody to jump in and be like, this is not okay. The way this man is hemming up this little girl. But you know who said this is not okay? The cop who did nothing. While watching her getting hemmed up like that. Exactly. 
which I don't know if that was supposed to be funny, but that's not funny. He is a pacifist cop. That was what was supposed to be funny. Was he's the one, the one pacifist cop in this country? No, stop! Don't take her away. <laughs> what the fuck? Can you go help? But the, the best thing about the whole storyline with the um with this Miss Teen Idaho pa- pageant is the husky best friend f- friend of me. <laughs> husky. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice because she was a bitch. <laughs> She was a bitch. You just you should have called her a bitch. You ain't had to call her a bitch is more accurate. Because <laughs> her being a bitch had nothing to do with her weight. What? No, she was skinny or small, or like big or skinny. Well, here was my problem with it though. She was mad at Lainey. So they get chosen who's going to be the finalist in this pageant. And Lainey got chosen. She didn't try to get chosen. She was just there to support her friend. I'm saying in air quotes. And then Lainey gets chosen, and her friend immediately turns on her. But I'm looking at her friend like, yo, Husky Bahan wasn't going to win anyway, whether Lainey was in it or not. I'm looking at all these other girls in this beauty pageant. Like, Lainey is the least of your worries. But she decides she's just going to go full on at Lainey. She friggin' trips her at one point and breaks her nose. Like, her, uh, like, just all this stuff that she's doing to her. It was ridiculous. He tripped her in front of a bunch of people. Like this, I don't know what is up with the idea of bullying at the school and how and, and why nobody cares that it's happening. But if a girl if a girl trips another girl, if a person trips another person and that person slams their face into the ground and comes up with a bloody nose, why isn't that automatic suspension? I just I don't even understand what is happening in this movie where the teachers are looking at times when this shit is going on. And they try to they try to establish this relationship between her and this girl without actually establishing it of them being some type of undercover hidden plastics group. And at the same time, Lainey is the duff of that group. I just, or that relationship. I just was like, wow, why hasn't Deidre punched this girl in the face yet? Because Deidre was too busy being an asshole to her little sister. And worrying about getting herself out of town. Mm-hmm. One of those I agree with. <laughs> Which one? The getting her ass. I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say agree with. I'm okay with Seriously. her trying to get her ass out of town. Well, it's like Lainey was trying to even... I feel like Lainey would have told her about what the girl was doing. But... Deirdre was so mean every time she even brought up the pageant yeah, that she, she really couldn't did. get like she couldn't get it out. Well, when they was in the car and she brought it up, she was like, I don't even know why you going to that shit. That inbred pageant shit. Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. And Ashley Murray, to be such a tiny little thing, just was just running everybody over. She was just rocking everyone. It's the big hair. That's, that's the, the big hair is threatening. She's like, she's like, this is what we doing. This is where we going. Even her dad. <laughs> she's like, shut up, whatever. He's like, okay, drive. She's like, I don't even have the keys. It's like, my God. She just tells all of them what to do. Um, what was the other? Oh, and then the CPS lady. Gloria. Oh, Gloria. So, why, do, why, why, whenever I hear the name Gloria, I think of that song? Which one? Gloria, Gloria that one. Oh my God. You, I'm not singing, damn it. I think that. You don't have to. Cause... Yeah, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I can't sing, so I'm not trying to run people off. You keep talking, I'm going to find that song. Okay. Well, the CPS lady, Gloria. Uh, she's visiting their house like every other week. I've never seen C- CPS in this town must be tidy because I've never seen CPS do so many home visits in this period of time. Um, um, I mean, in movies in general, CPS is like amazing at their job. They are top flight <laughs> security of child protection. But 
<laughs> in, in real life, they're you lucky if they come every six months. Lucky. What is that movie the, that came out a while ago with um John Boyega on Netflix, Imperial something? Dream. Yeah, Imperial Dream. That woman, that CPS woman, did not show up until Boyega got out of prison. So the whole time that uh, his son was living with the gangbangers and the crackhead mama, CPS was nowhere to be found. They didn't start caring until they were shooting that movie. Mm-hmm. You know, like it, that's just how CPS tends to work in film universes or whatever. They really care about the child when it's not as bad. Like they, You spend more time in the film trying to convince CPS that it's not as bad as they assume it is. Yeah. So. But she also has a little crush on their dad, which I thought was hilarious. Highly inappropriate. <laughs> it was yeah. highly inappropriate, but so funny when he said, what is the thing he said to her? Oh, he was flirting with her and um and he said that she looked young and she was like, Oh, barely legal. Mm. I died. I was like, ma'am, you look a smooth fifty two. There's no way anyone thinks you're barely legal. What happened in the scene where he just left her in the side of the house alley? He jumped in the car with Jet and took off. Oh. He was like, Let's go find your sister went around the corner and all you heard was slam and the car started. She just stood there waiting for love. (laughs) Oh my god. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the dad. I thought he was great. Comic relief. He was wonderful. Um, The mom the whole time is in jail. And at first I was kind of like it felt like the mom just wanted a vacation. <laughs> like she was just tired of dealing with all of them. She was like, yeah, I'm in jail and they're feeding me. And, you know, we I, I do yoga and, <laughs> and caught up on my reading. Like she just seemed like she was okay with being in jail because she just needed a break from these kids. <laughs> uh, but then you actually find out the whole reason why um, – she and ended up in jail and it's it's kind of like sad and it it causes Deirdre to actually rethink how she thought of her parents which I thought was a nice little and how she was approaching dealing with her family yeah because then you also see the like we watched this movie of her like railroading her whole family and then you see it from her mom's perspective of her mom like coming home like from working at Goodbye, trying her hardest. And you see, like, Deirdre, like, eating the pizza and running out the door and not even thanking her. And, you know, you just get that parent perspective, which I really appreciated. Oh, it cracked me up, though, when she went for a black mom. I was like, turn your ass around and sit down. I'm like, let's go, mama, let's go. That, and that's Cecile from uh, The Flash. Yes. hmm that's Joe's. That's Joe's girl from the Flash. She's also Harmony's nemesis from season five of Angel. Are you allowed to raise your voice like that when you in lock up? No. I was surprised oh. nobody called them out on it. I was like, <laughs> like, when she said, "Turn your ass around and set it down," I was waiting for a guard to be like, "Hey, <laughs> none of that." Mm-hmm. This ain't Wentworth though, so you can just like that. So. Well, when the dad visited, they near. <laughs> They nearly hooked up. All them bad decisions, I feel like, came rushing back in. <laughs> he showed up. I don't. Am I supposed to believe? Am I? Am I supposed to think that um, Deidre is both their biological child? Okay. I don't know, but the way that they were talking, apparently, she is. Although, I, in my mind, in my head, canon, mom <laughs> <laughs> <It> was creepy. <laughs> I definitely had in my notes how did they make that little chocolate baby? Look, out of the two women that directed and wrote and wrote this show, are they black? Mm, let me look them up. Please, because I got questions. <laughs> listen, not it explains everything. <laughs> listen, listen, I need to know because <laughs> uh, in liberal white world, this might make sense to them, but the director looks of color but not black. Mm-hmm. And let me see if I can find a picture of the writer. Of the person who wrote this storyline where the little chocolate child is 
a mixed baby. I'm not seeing. Let's see, Shelby Farrell. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find a picture of her. Writers don't usually have pictures on their IMDb pages. I know. Google search. Let's see. How you spell it, Farrell? Farrell, yeah. Like no, Will Farrell. Definitely. Yeah, she's definitely white. See, <laughs> I'm looking at her face. If this is yeah. her, her Twitter, if this is her Twitter, I'm pretty sure. She falls down. Here's the yeah. thing. I don't think that you can blame the writer. Look up the casting director. That's who you need to look at. I mean, I'm I'm fine with it. They probably just went with again who was uh, they needed a, a black girl and they went with the black girl who was best for the film. I'm you know I'm glad they didn't didn't try and like cast some white girl and be like she's the product of these mixed parents. Listen, I can defend my black belief. Okay, I I just I needed to know if that was supposed to be her white daddy. Okay. <laughs> Because I think we were like both girls have curly hair. It counts. You know what? Ma'am, ma'am. Ma no. Mm -mm. And see, the little brother and Lainey were I, I thought were his children. Mm -hmm. And Deidre was, you know, from before relationship. But then when she kept talking to him, like you the father that raised me, I was like, okay, well, father can be an open term. It does not mean biological it don't mean daddy or whatever you know or however you want to do the terminology but the more i was watching the relationship the more i was like no they don't mention a, a before a relationship before him at all i think that's supposed to be his biological child i think so too they just have one really chocolate baby <laughs> that's not how this mm -hmm. works okay she's not chocolate he's not chocolate you know jeans so <laughs> Yeah, because the mama right. is not chocolate the way <laughs> the way Deirdre is. I feel like that actress is mixed as well. Oh yeah. But oh, you like know, I'm jeans. I'm just gonna say that this, this it was some some uh left some leftovers, some rollover jeans. Okay. And they just jumped all up in Deirdre. She probably looks like her grandmama. That's that's cool. Yep, I go with that. I'm gonna let y'all have that. <laughs> But no, that's not how it works. <laughs> so then these guys. So what's funny also about this whole them robbing a train thing is that everybody figures it out fairly quickly. <laughs> like the counselor figures out that it's them. The dad figures out that it's them. Pretty much everyone figures out. And rather than turning them in, everybody tries to help them. Small town, for sure. <laughs> definitely. Look, the fact right. that she immediately shoot mom when she had that TV over her head at like a dead oh. definitely a small town. Yo. <laughs> was threatening to hit police with a television. Right. A First of all, that's a strong woman because she was holding like 42 inch over her head for a smooth <laughs> five, ten minutes. And then she threw that shit like six feet. Mama was okay. done. She was fed up. Mm -hmm. oh, she, was, they, they, it, she was broken, and I understand. I understand. It would be like that sometimes. She went from $20,000 in savings to negative $35 in debt. Uh, I felt so bad for her. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad for her. I did like how like when we first saw her, she was all crazy. Like Her hair was all wild and everything. She was in jail for like two days, and she had the cornrows back. <laughs> Like she went full orange is the new black <laughs> at the cornrows to the back. Like you know they gotta have a salad with your meal in here. It's a law. Niggas don't fuck with me on the yard. Tell you. She was happy. She was like, I'm upset that I'm in jail, but also you don't have to post my bell just quite yet. You know in jail you only have to do one job. Like you either do laundry. Or kitchen. I ain't had it like that in how old are you? <laughs> That's all. She was done. She was done. I loved it. Um, 
And and the counselor figures it out the minute the guy comes to her office and is like, I think these robbers might be teenagers. The counselor is like, I'm pretty sure I know exactly who that is. <laughs> but wouldn't tell. She's like, you my mail ticket out of here. Mm-hmm. And then she's I mean, like, from- you don't want the other girl to be the valedictorian. She majors in domestic sciences. Her whole speech is going to be about cast iron cookware. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> she just wasn't shit at all I loved her that's what I'm saying like I needed her character in this movie I just I just needed her to be arms folded in every scene she was great she was horrible to everyone but she was great <laughs> she was consistently in hate with everyone which is fine mm-hmm. I really <laughs> liked her boyfriend ex-boyfriend guy I really appreciated him. He was cute. Um, they never kissed or anything. And I looked it up, and that actor is like 30 something. Are you serious? What was that? <laughs> He's like 30, 31. And I think That's Ashley funny. Murray is an actual teenager. Oh, God. Yeah, she looks like a baby. Oh, my okay. God. So I'm pretty sure that's why they never made out. <laughs> Why are they casting some grown ass man? Come on now. But it's funny because I have a friend um who knows this guy. He played Zoe's boyfriend on Blackish. Um, but in real life, he's grown. He's like twenty nine or something like that. And she was saying how he was always on set, like, oh, I hope they don't write a kissing scene. I hope they don't. That's we that's ethically weird. And just nope. Yeah, they don't like, need to be somebody that age, don't don't be weird about it. Because the thing is, usually nine times out of ten, everybody playing teenagers is in their twenties or so. Okay, so uh, Ashley, I'm thinking unless she went to school early, she's grown because she graduated after after it says after high school, she moved to New York City where she studied at the New York Conservatory for the Dramatic Arts, graduating in two thousand nine. Okay. And that was seven years ago, so she's got to be grown. Okay, I hope she's, she's grown because she looks she looks so young. She looks like a baby. I mean, she might actually be like thirty. I hope then. so. I hope because so. if she graduated in two thousand and nine, I graduated in oh eight. Because most of the other people that are on Riverdale, like who are playing the teenagers, are pretty teenager ish. Mm. That cast is pretty young. So I thought, I was like, maybe she is like an actual teenager. Hmm. Hmm. That makes things better. <laughs> I was going to say, why are you going to cast some grown ass man as a love interest of a child? Come on now. It happens all the time as well. I know. <laughs> I don't make it right. It's a lot of shit happening. It does not. <laughs> um... And then, I mean, I don't, we're obviously spoiling the movie. The ending, where they turn the tables on the investigator, I thought was just super cute and and brilliant. And I like how she manages, even though pretty much everybody who's standing there knows that they have been robbing those trains, she still manages to flip it so that not only are they not in trouble, but that the train company is going to pay them to not sue. I got a question. Mm. Um, what did the profile for Ashley Murray on IMDb say again? That she graduated from the New York Conservatory in 2009. That is a high school or a college? She said It says after graduating high school back in Kansas City, Missouri, she moved to New York City where she studied at the New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts, graduating in 2009. That girl 21. Well, oh, she 1996. Really yeah, I just looked her I'm up. I'm very confused then because if she, wait. Or either that or she's lying about her age. So she, wait, so she graduated from high, she was born in 1996. Then she graduated high school, I will assume at 17 or 18. 13, and it's not unusual. I graduated with a 13 year old in high you school. Graduated 13? Oh. No, I didn't. A kid that went to school with me was 13 when he graduated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe, okay. She's a high school prodigy. I mean, my dad graduated when he was 15, so. 
That was also back in like nineteen. She must have, or she must have like did a GED or something like that. No, it says she graduated high school. That's not GED. She got a diploma. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She got a diploma. She might have been home. Well, no, it says she graduated high school. I was like, she might have been homeschooled, but no, they're saying she graduated high school. So, huh. This is too much for me right now. I can't do the math for this right now. It's okay. <laughs> she's old enough. She old enough. She grown. That's what matters. That's it. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to cough. I muted. Um, young 20 something plus year old. If she is, yeah, she's still. She a baby. She's going through adult womanhood for sure. If she's only 21. That makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah, but. Her character, so they end up getting not only paid off by the train company, they also end up not getting arrested somehow. Um, and she ends up going to college, which is what she had planned to do in the first place. And I think they hint pretty pretty heavily that her parents are definitely going to hook up again. Even though at the end of the show, the mother ignores him when he drives past the house. Right. After he no. uh, goes off. But then she opens up the door and she says, "Call me." Did she? Oh, I missed it. See, I missed that part. Yeah. Okay. So she like, like they go in the house and she's like, mm, "Whatever." And then like she opens up the door and she's like, "Call me." <laughs> oh my god. Mhm. Good for her. So it's going oh, down. No. She's about to have another little sibling. Exactly. No. no exactly. No. 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 Oh, deadbeat ass mother. No. <laughs> <laughs> be mad all you want but she love that man that man live outside and everything <laughs> I'm there you need me and not when they don't look. like nah he, look he living out he living out there Shelby like Uncle Rico it was sad the, the part that was sad I like he, how he came back though but when he told the little boy was the little boy supposed to be slow or aut- autistic uh, I couldn't tell neither that's that's he was know. really quiet and very he was emotionally delayed okay i don't think that was biological i just think that's a failure to thrive in the environment they were living in okay. right. makes sense to me i'll go with that when he said to him when they were at the pageant uh, when he said to him, I got to go outside and get air on my own. And you realize like he was leaving him. Uh, mm-hmm. That was like, and he gave him his little action figure. That was really a sweet moment. Him. Yeah. He knew he was leaving him. Mm-hmm. I really love that. Um, so if you had to grade this film on a scale of it's one to 10 now, right? Yeah. For this scale, uh, what would you give it? I give it an eight and a half. Um, there were some little bit of plot inconsistencies, but it was a fun movie. It's a fun movie, Phenom. But it's still so sorry, hmm? Phenom. Yeah, um, it, it, it is, I think, I think it is a mess, like <laughs> a lot of. I think it is a mess on purpose. Um, I, don't, I think it is definitely shot like a Netflix film. Um, I think it is shot with the, the sound design and just the, the cinematic production and how quirky everything is that it's not, I don't think it's necessarily for somebody my age. I think it is for people the age of the actresses in this movie. To, to get their attention or like people who maybe back in the day were like you're more girl fans and stuff like that so based off based off of that I think it's like an 8 out of 10 like <laughs> you hate like so <laughs> much I thought it was gonna be like it's a 5 it's, it's not, not Logan five. like you're not gonna tear it apart Logan? but like I wouldn't tell my pops to, like if I, I would be like yo dad you should check this out cause he'd be like what is this quirky shit you got me watching, man. But like my little cousins or or Ashley or somebody, like they like little stuff like that. They already watched. So listen, I watched Drop Dead Diva, so I understand. 
why you watch shit like this sometimes. Is Drop Dead Deep the one with the lawyer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I loved that show. Sorry. No. I watched it back in the day, which is why I'm back watching it again. <laughs> oh, that show was so cute. I loved that show. It's hilarious. And quiet as it's kept, uh, Phenom loves him uh, some white woman shows. Like, <laughs> you know, you be out here watching Big Little Lies and Girls and all this other stuff. Oh my God, but I read Big Little Lies too, and I do watch Girls. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I read that Big Little Lies isn't even my first. Um, oh my God, I can see her name and I can't, I can't get it all. Is it Alice? No, that's not the writer. Um, Mor oh my God, what is the author's name? Like I'm fucking up now. That's not. That wasn't even the first book I'd read by her. That was the second. <laughs> okay, I, I would definitely audible her fucking books because they are the whitest tales of all time. They help me understand white women a little bit better. <laughs> like the struggles that they go through in these little towns and whatnot. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even die. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even die. I do do that. I do. I really, um, really like this one. I would probably give it a 9 out of 10. What I really appreciated was that it introduced me to... Uh, this actor that played Lady. I thought she was just the cutest little thing. Oh, she did such a great job. She was so good. I, I just, I love her. I love her so much. She did the voice of, when I looked at the voiceover work she did, she did the voice of uh, Tip Tucci in the home cartoon. Not the one with Rihanna, uh, but there's a TV series one. Okay. Yeah, and I was just like, who is this precious little thing? I love her so much. She's so sweet. And when she finally beat up um, Old Girl, it was everything. That, that to me, made the whole movie. That girl was like 25, dog. <laughs> and she couldn't walk for shit. Okay, that was a scene where she had to walk away in some tight-ass pants. And I was just like, your legs. You're going to make me say something, and I'm going to have people mad at me, but... Let's just say I didn't appreciate her her little behind in in certain outfits had the audacity to be calling Lainey out and trying to make her feel bad. Damn. Get her she life was, together. She was doing the most with she was doing the most. With okay. The, say it. I'll say it for you. The most with the least. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I try not to add the tidbit, but you got I it. Said it. <laughs> got Bye. it. <laughs> and it wasn't even like she was just unattractive but she's one of those people that's like if you if you had a better attitude like people would people would probably like dudes would fawn over you especially in that town come on mm -hmm. but because you just it makes everything else about you unattractive bad. yeah it just she's just evil it, for no reason I was like why yeah. are you just so salty for no reason but that's because she know Lainey is the prettier friend. I'm just being honest. Here. She know that like Lainey had to get dressed up once to come through, walk through that school, and she had all the white boys drooling after that. That was so cute. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> but she did her little wink. She was like, <laughs> what, those Louis Vuittons, I think they were the red bottom shoes. She had her red bottom shoes. Mm hmm. She had BMF playing in the background. She was blowing money fast from all that train from them train sales. <laughs> awesome. They this movie also had, I thought, a pretty decent soundtrack. Yeah, I did. I think I checked out on that part. <laughs> I don't oh, remember yeah. any. You're supposed to be here with the music commentary. That's what you I don't do. Any of the music from this movie, not one song. Holy mess. I did. I completely checked out when music started playing. No. That's a first. This was a Sundance film? I think so. I think Netflix bought it at Sundance. Yep. Yeah. Um, film had its world premiere Sundance in January. Mm -hmm. That's good then. Yeah. That means a white <laughs> Just keep it I think Netflix is doing a really, really good job at acquiring the right material. Mm -hmm. I think between like this, 
you have the Dear White People TV series, I think, is coming out next month. Um, Mm -hmm. The Burning Sands movie, which I still haven't had a chance to watch yet, and um, (laughs) Imperial Dreams. I'm afraid to watch a movie about hazing, like black people hazing other black people. I just, <laughs> ah, that bothers me so much. I think everybody needs to not take it so seriously because I feel like they've been doing these movies about, these have been like on Lifetime for years now about white fraternities and white sororities and hazing. And I feel like everybody's getting in their feelings because it's a black fraternity. but. I think it's just a common college story. I I hear I hear what you're saying, but like like for instance, I did not join a fraternity because I am just not the type of person who will deal with an ounce of hazing. Mm-hmm. Like I just I right. If you talk to me, given my personality, like I'm so my mother's child. If you talk to me a certain way, I will fucking flip on you. And there, there's not going to be no, but you trying to join our brotherhood. Like, I don't feel like you, my brothers, if you've been trying to break me, that's, that's just how I function. So I've always attributed hazing to those like white fraternities do that bullshit. Then when I started learning that frat, that like black fraternities did it, that, that really bothered me. Yeah. Like, as if you have enough problems already, we're hazing each other. And then when I saw like a serious Netflix film about, I was like, okay, I can't. I'm going to watch this and I'm going to get mad. Mm. I'm going to get really fucking pissed watching it. So I'm sure it's an, it's an amazing film. Like It's nothing against the film or the fact that that exists. The fact that it exists is what bothers me so much. So, yeah. like I want to watch it, too, because I know it's probably good. But I know I'm going to want to break something. I might like throw Cora or something. And I love Cora, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> don't throw that dog. <laughs> But yeah, no, I understand that. I I definitely had a friend who went through her lot. She was the only one online her year. So she got all of the brunt of whatever they were doing to her, which mm. she never talked about. And I was just like, "Ooh, she's better than me because I, I could maybe have like five or six other people around me to, you know, support me. And I'd still be like, I don't know if I'm about these people getting in my face. I don't think it's for me. Um, did y'all see Power Rangers yet? No, no but I want to. Okay. Ah, I can't. See, I can't even. There's a scene in that where somebody does something to another character and probably everybody in the theater is going to scream in laughter. And that that's what I would do if somebody hazed me, like, or attempted to. Mm. That's how I was in college. I was just not, I was cool, but I was not a person who was taking shit from people at all. I've definitely toned it down <laughs> now that I've got like salaries and health benefits and shit. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that, that'll get everybody to act right. <laughs> but I ain't had shit to lose. Yeah. I was losing it on everybody. <laughs> that was, it was different. It was a different time. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining me today to talk about this. I kind of just was like, I really want to see this movie and I want to talk about it. And I want more people to watch it because I just saw two black girls leading a comedy, which you just never see. Agreed. When I saw the trailer, I was excited about it. I think, full transparency, I did enjoy it. Um, It was sad. And that's just because of the headspace I'm in. I think if I had seen this last year or in nine months, I'd find it a little more entertaining. But I did enjoy it. So it's definitely a good watch. How come? How come? I'm just I mean, gonna, it 8.5 too. Right. Like that's high. Because it is entertaining. I just know the headspace I'm in. I wanted to account for that. I'm not in a headspace for some of the themes in the show right now is all. It's okay. But it's still good. Oh, okay. I feel you. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me anyway. And um, definitely check out Deirdre and Lainey rob a train on Netflix. Also check out Imperial Dreams. Check out Burning Sands. Check out Dear White People when that drops. Because if we want Netflix and other companies to keep, you know, giving us this kind of content, we got to support it. So get out there and watch it. It 
it was like an hour and a half. It was an awesome hour and a half. I laughed my butt off this morning watching it. So, don't you love when like white people realize that black people got pull? And and mind you, and they still whitewash and stuff. So, I know. But when they don't, they get all the accolades and the awards because of us. Mm-hmm. I just don't even. I don't understand why they keep whitewashing shit. It makes no sense at this point. It's just ridiculous. Like the blacker your stuff is, the the better well done and black in black it is, the more white people want to watch that shit. And then you get the black people too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't. Mm. It makes no sense. Shout to out me. to people like HBO and uh, own black on for being smart about that shit though. Yeah, Netflix, I think it's on it. I know that uh, one of the people who works at Netflix acquisitions or something like that uh, is the one that's married to Luke Cage. That's how he got the job. And Mike Coulter's wife. Yeah, Mike Coulter's wife. So, you know, and I've met some of the folks that work at Netflix and it seems like they have a pretty, I don't want to like be like, they're the most diverse because I honestly don't know. I've just met one or two people who are POC who work for Netflix. So they seem to have hmm. their finger on the pulse. That's cool. Yeah, that works. That works. They're doing a good, they're doing an amazing job. Yeah. So check it out. Thank you for joining us. And um, I guess this will be out pretty soon. Maybe we'll get together for another Netflix whatever that drops maybe we'll get together and talk about dear white people who knows sounds good all All for it all right thanks guys 